Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're doing a two-part series on this little power supply, and we're not necessarily testing it. We're actually trying to find a power supply that we like that will help you get into welding. Now, our criteria on this particular one is how do we find a power supply that's under $300? And it works pretty good. And of course, we've tried several, and uh, you know, we did the Harbor Freight thing. It didn't turn out so well. So we found this one here, and it's a little 100, 110 volt power supply. It's an inverter, and inverter seem to have a little tighter arc when you're welding with it, so it doesn't require quite as much amperage. Now, we use this for stick welding, you know, which is constant current, and because it is constant current, we should be able to TIG weld with it. Now, on the front of this machine, sure enough, they've got a little switch that you can click over and go from stick to TIG. Now, a $300 unit doesn't provide much. To get this to TIG weld, you have to add a couple of things, and that's what we're going to show you today in, in part two. One is it doesn't have a gas solenoid in it, so because of that, you've got to have a TIG torch that's got a valve on it. And, of course, you know we use only the best. We've got the CK Worldwide Flex Head. Nine and it just works perfect with this machine. So we're going to demonstrate and one of the problems that we've found in the past is that setting the amperage, you try to find one amp per thousandth of thickness. Okay, so I've got some sheet metal here that's about 30 or 40 thousandths. So I'm going to set the machine at about 30 amps and see if it really does adjust properly. This is a scratch start. Okay, now here's the key. Scratch starts should not leave tungsten as much as people think they do. There are a lot of power supplies, unfortunately, that do. So you just do a little sweep. If you make contact, it should not leave tungsten. So we're gonna see how soft that start is on scratch start. I don't have a foot control. So I've gotta know by testing and resetting, testing and resetting. So I'm gonna set this machine to do some thin gauge material, kind of like if you're doing auto body and you're just trying to get into it. So. I'm going to set it at about 30 amps and I'm going to scratch start. I'm going to make a weld. I'm going to do a lap weld. The reason I do that is because a lap weld is tougher than a butt weld. And if you have good control of the arc, it'll do a nice job. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the machine. I'm going to turn it up considerably and I'm going to do eighth inch. I've got two plates overlapped eighth inch. So that's a pretty good range. Now this machine is only DC, so keep that in mind. If you want to do aluminum welding, you've got to have an AC machine, it's got to have high frequency, and the cost goes up. So just know that this is DC only. You've got to have a regulator. This is our uh, Mr. TIG MT50 regulator, and it operates and reads in CFH. Now that's American standards instead of liters per minute. So you're going to find that I'm typically somewhere around the 15 to 20 CFH on this. Now I've got a tungsten in here and I'm using the, uh, the new laser tungsten by CK and it's the all purpose. All purpose meaning it runs good off AC, DC, runs off of inverters or transformer type machines. So let's, uh, let's get started. I'm going to get all my gear on and I'm going to start off with the thin wall material. So see you in a minute. Okay, I've got this sheet metal overlapped so it's uh, very much like a lap weld or a fillet weld. And I set the machine at about 35 to 40 amps. Yeah, just the rule of thumb, one amp per thousandth of thickness. Now, the one thing you got to remember for sure, for sure, is this. Turn this valve on. If you scratch start and you forgot to turn your gas on, you got to go regrind your tungsten because it's not going to start very well after that. So, went ahead and turned it on. You can kind of hear a little hiss. Looked at my regulator. I'm at between 15 and 20 CFH. Tungsten stick out, it's only about a quarter of an inch. I've got a gas lens in here, like the gas lens. So let's see how well the arc starts. Oh yeah, very quiet, very easy. Okay, now I got an arc, I got a little puddle but it's a little cold, which is actually good. That means that I can gear down to even thinner materials. So I need to turn this machine up just a few amps, maybe five amps, possibly 10. So just, just a slight adjustment, and let's try it again.
Okay, so it does look a lot better. Yeah, and I'm just dabbing. My filler material is uh, ER70 S2. Okay, anyway, it's welding very nice. I got this uh, thin plate sitting on this heavy tooling table, and it's taking a little bit of the uh, heat away. Not bad though. Tig isn't very fast, but boy, you could sure make it pinpoint precise. Anyway, I'm going to come to the end of my weld right here, terminate it. All right, now I just dabbed, you know, I, I established an arc, and you can see the liquid puddle here, and then I just dab, dab, dab. And this is very much, you know, like doing some body and fender work. You just, you know, you cut out a piece and you tack it. And then when you weld, you can see that you just keep the heat really low. So you keep the distortion down. So this is only a three inch, four inch weld, but that's the way it's done. And then uh, when you get ready to polish this off, there's not a lot of uh, positive reinforcement. So um, I'm going to change over and I'm going to uh, set up the machine for one eighth inch. So join you shortly. Okay, now I'm getting ready to, uh, to weld on the eighth inch plate where it's overlap. You know, typically the rule of thumb is one up amp per thousand. But I gotta tell you, in inverter machines, the arc seems to be just a little bit tighter. So that, that rule kind of applies. Now, I don't have variable control here on a foot control, so I gotta play with the machine to find out where it's hot and cold. I set this machine at about 85 amps, where on a normal machine, I'll set it probably 100. But 80, 85, 90 on this machine seems to be right for this. So you just have to play with it. So I'm going to go ahead and scratch start. Now on the thin material, the scratch start was just, was just great. So uh, got no complaints at all. So let's, let's see what it does here. Okay, well the scratch start was just fine. I'm just dabbing. You know, so I'm running at about 80 amps. I, you know, I could go up just a little bit more. I mean, I could probably take this up to 100, but the arc is so stable, so smooth, I don't mind going a little bit slower. Okay, same thing, uh, you know, I just, I look for the, the two metals to melt together and then it dives in, in kind of a penetration mode. Once it dives and gets down there in the root, now you got control of the puddle. And so I just travel along, the scratch start was smooth all the way, I didn't leave any tungsten, it, just a slow travel speed. And uh, here's one of the things to keep in mind when you get to the end of your weld right here, there's no way to terminate your weld. You don't have a foot control. So what you have to do is you have to pull the arc away like this. And so I, I eliminate the arc and then I actually go back down real quick just so I can shield the puddle. Uh, now this isn't used in aerospace or anything in, in super critical applications. So just know a scratch start is not always approved. But for a beginning starter type welder, welding person, it's fantastic. Okay, well guys, I'm, I'm excited about this machine because uh, I just i have never found anything that low in cost that'll do that kind of a job. So uh, I'm going to do what I can to package this, and, and obviously I'm going to give you a Mr. Take Thumbs Up. Uh, again, you have a, a scratch start, and what that means is that when you terminate your weld, you actually have to pull away. You don't have a foot control. 
So when you pull away, just remember that you don't have any argon shielding over your puddle. So you won't use this for aerospace type applications. What you will use it for is auto body restorations, handrails, things like that. It'll cover everything you want. And again, I TIG welded off of a 15 amp circuit. It's a 115 volt machine. Now, what we like to do at Well.com is we like to package machines that we like. Uh, we package them, we make the machine actually better than it really is because we put the best stuff on there. The CK Worldwide Torch with a valve on it, the 9 flex head. We went ahead and packaged this thing so you could either buy this separately or go to the package. And the package has a 12 and a half foot Superflex cable, has this torch with a valve on it. If you'll notice, it's got a gas lens and it's got tungsten. I've given you a couple of back caps. You've already got a tungsten with it, so you're good to go there. And I've tossed in the gas lens setup. Well, I call that my mini pack. So that's gonna come with this kit. This regulator's going to come with it. Uh, anyway, normally package, and whatever you do, never go out and just buy this part and this component and this component, because many times it's in a package. Anytime you buy it in a package, you're gonna find it's anywhere from about 20 to 30% off. So just know that we've got all kinds of packages out there. So we're going to complete this package and this, this package is going to be about $196. This regulator alone typically is uh, $69 and we have a training video. Uh, this is the basics of TIG welding with yours truly. Just, just know that things like that are out there and we'll keep testing uh, and as long as we find good stuff we'll bring it to you. So thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.